Hi, my name is Omotola Jaladeke. Okay? This movie called me I'm a sexy and movie called me I'm a tea. And you are watching Pulse TV. To Esther, you know, the producer. She's you put your hands on a child? I am a lawyer. Engagement. Objection, my lord. I specialize in fighting for the less privileged women and children. Are you all right? And you don't need to pay a dime. I was very lucky um, to be working with people who were willing, actually director, he was, and I also give props to Esther, you know, the producer, she's a first time um, producer, she's just young, out of school, and she reminds me of another special someone, Chineze, Ayane, that was exactly the same um, experience, you know, she was coming out of school as well, um, she believed in me, and she um, agreed for us to manipulate the thoughts, scatter the script and reshape it into whatever vision we had. And I, I feel like that's something that you don't get very often. And the director was extremely um, generous with how much he wanted to give and receive. This is a great case. Two months ago, a 14-year-old girl was found at the chief's residence. I get fulfillment tackling and putting them behind bars. I get me! I was able to distinguish or differentiate Adai Gray from any other character naturally. I think that's what artists need to do every now and then, just take that breather and um, come to terms with yourself and um, rejuvenate, if I can put it that way. So I think that's what happened with me as Omotala, as an actor. I took time off to, um, you know, to, to, to rediscover my, my, myself or should I say my passion. There's something in me I can't, I can't control it. I came back into alter, alter ego, um, acting at Daigui with a clear mind, you know, of exactly what I, what I understood the character to be and exactly how I felt. She, she, she saw life and her eyes, I, I saw things uh, through her eyes. I also did my research. Um, we, the director and I stayed up many nights, you know, just researching and arguing back and forth on things, the way she sees things. I mean, I've not been through her kind of experience. It was a little bit difficult because there were times where I argued, just like anybody else would probably argue, that, you know, is this, is this even normal? Why would she do this just because of this? You know, so, so we had to do our research and find out that these things actually happen. And that's the purpose. The purpose is not for me to understand it as a motola. It's for us to find that this actually truly happens and, you know, put it out there and say, look, have you thought about this? Maybe this is something we need to start looking into. I don't want to talk about it! I think he's dead. But I was caught loose today. Those bastards fired me. When you're doing a movie like Alter Ego, you're not just acting, especially if you're really immersed in the character. You're not just acting because um, you have to do the scene and leave. You you go into it thinking, all right, this this is a movie to change people's lives. Yeah. So you always have that responsibility at the back of your mind. So you're very intentional, you know. And um, we argued a lot and said there were times when even things that we had written in the script that looked all right at that time, um, because now we have been shooting the scheme of things just didn't seem necessary, you know. So we would argue, oh, like, is this even necessary at this point? Are we underestimating this, or are we, you know? So there were times where, as the as the as the character progressed, as we kept shooting you now found out that you felt a little bit more attached to the project you know it was like it was like you leave breathe even when you're leaving the set you know you're going with that character you're sleeping with that so it's different from when you just read the script when you're in it you're living in it a woman who has put herself in the forefront of giving justice there's something in me i can't i can't control it if i could evade them i would have um, at some point, I even thought maybe it was, when I first got the script, I actually thought it was not real. I thought, why would anyone play out that way because of that, you know? So it wasn't something I was naturally open to do because for me, I've always said if sex scenes are in the movie, um, it's very important to establish that it's very necessary, you know, at whatever point they come in. So for me, it was pretty much about, is it necessary? Do we need it? Is it, is it true? Fight, I die. Fight. I'm fighting. Fight. My life is a mess. I feel really disgusted about this. That evil. And so when they could prove that, that it was possible and all of that, it was, it was pretty much how far <laughs> can we go with this and to what extent does this movie need it? Um, so yeah, so there were some we changed, there were some we tweaked, they were also having in mind the society that we're in. Mm -hmm. So how could we push the envelope and do what we needed to do without looking funny and still not um, 
come out, you know, to be unnecessarily vulgar. It was a very, very difficult um, line to tread on, but I, I think we did the best we possibly could. Get in the car. Madame. Unfortunately, that didn't happen in this movie. Mm -hmm. um, because, you know, you can do that if what you're doing is this simple pieces you know stuff when you're doing full-on pieces and stuff like that it's almost impossible to cheat for camera you know you you have to be ready to, to go in <laughs> you know was he awkward well no not for me i think if i was young maybe it would be um, because then there's so many things going through your mind mm -hmm. because i've already gone through all of that several times before i mean i did the prostitute i did mortal inheritance where that was my first full-on kiss and scene on on screen i think you know and i was very young i was just 17 or so if i remember correctly so i've gone through all the stages where you have the cuckoo. so for me now it was just about <laughs> let's get it over and done with what did you call the name of that church again holy life ministries yeah. Please welcome Miss Ada Igwe. I was meeting all these guys for the first time. I don't think I'd ever met Wally. No, I have I hadn't. That was my first time of meeting Wally. And it was my first time of meeting Kunle. So yeah, it was um I won't say awkward, it was just um new. It was it was fresh. You know, like you're meeting someone for the first time and um you're gonna have all those heavy scenes with them, you know. So you want to see where their head is at and stuff like that. Um, but like I said, I feel like, you know, I was working with, I felt like I was working with professionals. So I didn't feel like I needed to put them straight or whatever. So I hung out with him. So it, the first day he was on set, I remember we joked a lot. We talked about this, we talked about that. So he relaxed and all of that stuff. And so when it was time, he's amazing. He just did his job flawlessly. Wally, I'm sure you already know, is a, is a crazy man. <laughs> Ada is very selfish, bitter, and also an ambitious person. Uh, go see Alter Ego, don't, don't regret it later. Um, I think it's going to be extremely worth your while. I don't want to be like all braggy braggy and everything, but we worked. We, we worked. We enjoyed the process, you know. I think it's something people will be very proud proud of. You know, something you can show your friend and say, we, we made this in Nigeria. I think I've messed up.